Hello, Ironman archaeologists. Today, I've got a guide on RuneScape's newest skill, archaeology, and there's a lot to it. As with all my guides, feel free to use the timestamps on the screen now or down in the description below to skip around to what you need to know. Now, before we start, I need to say this, not as a flex, but just as a statement. I've completed this skill on two very different Ironman accounts. One with the trim cape, with basically everything unlocked in the whole game, and one from basically a brand new account with nothing unlocked. And while I definitely preferred training, having every unlock, and a zillion porters, it's absolutely doable to train the skill without invention, summoning, or porters of any kind. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. So all of the essential items and the essential unlocks, well, you don't have to have all of them. You can still start the skill, and you can still train it the whole way without any of these. All of these items and unlocks are here to help your training, and either speed it up or make it more bearable. With that out of the way, let's jump into the essential items. There's really not that many. Well, to start the skill, there's not that many. Having a luck ring actually does help while training this skill, because it rolls more tetra compasses and complete tomes, which gives you more XP. Archaeology is a gathering skill, so bring your grace of the elves. Root of the Gods gives you free components when you have it in your pocket slot. And if you're following the time sprite, which you should be doing, Root of the Gods makes that better too. As we train the skill more, we'll unlock many other useful things, and I'll make sure I'll mention them when we unlock them. Having a high level in summoning, invention, divination, and mining is going to help you out while training the skill. Access to big game hunter is also helpful. If you're not planning on augmenting any matics, then make sure you have a high smithing level also. Now let's talk dailies. Like every other skill, you have your daily challenge. Do it if you want XP in that skill. You can also use jack of trades every day onto archaeology. Also a daily, you can use the god banner to boost your archaeology by two levels for half an hour a day. And if you have it, you can use the premier artifact to send 50% of the materials, soil, and artifacts to your bank for an hour. Every day. Use it if you have it. And speaking of porters, you might want to stock up on a lot of these. Some of the higher level archaeology spots are really far from both material carts and banks. So those are the spots you're going to want to use lots of porters for. The higher your divination level, the higher tier sign of the porter you can make. At level 68, you can make sign of the porter 4s using emeralds. At level 88, you can make sign of the porter 5s using rubies. And at level 99, you can make sign of the porter 6s using diamonds. You can mine precious gem rocks that are found in the Shiloh village and the Alcarid resource dungeon. But you'll need 75 dungeoneering for that one. These gem rocks give emerald, ruby, and diamonds. Don't forget your gem bag. Now there's lots of different archaeology spots, and I'll make sure to mention what spots that I recommend you use Sign of the Porters for. Now, a question I've been asked a lot, are material caches worth it? Unfortunately, there's no night and day yes or no answer to this. The right answer is it depends. If you're only looking for one material, and the excavation site that you're currently digging at does not give it, then of course material caches are worth it. If you're looking for two different materials, and the excavation site that you're currently training at drops both of them, then I would say it's not worth it. Just stay at the excavation site that you're currently at. And if you're anywhere in the middle, like you need two materials, and the dig site you're at drops one of them but not the other one, then the choice is yours, whether you want to go do the material cache. Unfortunately, I can't give a definitive answer on whether material caches are worth it. You're going to have to find out for yourself. To get started, you're going to head to the Archaeology Guild, which is east of the Varric Lodestone. Once you get here, the game will direct you through the tutorial. Pay a little bit of attention to this, because it basically teaches you how to train the entire skill. If you're just space barring through it anyway, then here's a breakdown. Go to your material spot, gather soil, materials, and artifacts, and then restore your artifacts to complete collections. 
That's the entire skill. Now that you've finished the tutorial, you'll be level 5 and you've unlocked the first dig site. If you haven't already, make sure you pick up your free archaeology journal and keep it with you at all times. This lets you teleport back to the archaeology guild as many times as you want and has a workbench in it and you can run over to the map here to teleport to all of the other dig sites that you have unlocked. So now, let's head to the first dig site we've unlocked, Karadet. As a general rule of thumb, every time you excavate a new artifact, left-click inspect it to see how many you need to restore for every collection. Also, look it up on the wiki to see if you need any more for mysteries or to unlock special researchers or anything else. From level 5 until level 12, you'll stay at the same spot. Make sure you restore these daggers and these bows evenly. After you turn in one for each collection, keep all the extra, both restored and damaged, artifacts in your bank. You're going to need a lot of bank space for this skill. Sorry in advance. As you probably have already noticed, when you turn in restored artifacts towards collections, you get cronuts. For now, add them to your currency pouch and forget about them. Now that you're level 12 archaeology, talk to Dr. Nabinik and you can complete your first mystery. I'm not going to go over how to solve every mystery in this skill because we'd be here all day, but make sure as soon as you unlock a mystery, you're trying to complete it as soon as possible. Mysteries give static XP rewards, which means they're worth a lot more at the level you unlock them than they're worth at level 120. Now that we've finished the first mystery, we're now inside Karadet. So we're going to start to get pylon batteries. Pylon batteries are XP. The more of these you turn in at one time, the more XP per battery. From level 12 until level 17, we're going to excavate the legionary remains. And we're going to start getting custodian log pages while training. There are a lot of page mysteries in this skill, and they're all RNG. They can take you less than one level, they can take you several hours for one page. It's RNG. On the bright side, you don't have to think about completing a mystery, you'll just get it by training the skill. Just like the first bot, make sure you restore these artifacts evenly. Once you hit level 17, you can move on to the Castra debris, and you're going to stay here until level 20. Don't worry if you haven't found all of the custodial log pages, we'll be coming back to carry it later, and some of the higher level archaeology spots can still roll these pages. Now we're level 20 archaeology, we've unlocked the second dig site, the Infernal Source. Yay! The easiest way to get to the Infernal Source is to teleport back to the guild using your journal, run over to the map table, and you can teleport right to the Infernal Source. Now that we're inside, we're going to excavate the Lodge Bar Storage from level 20 until level 24, and we're going to start getting pages now. Once we're at level 24, swap over to the Lodge Art Storage, and we're going to stay at the spot until we finish the Eyes and Their Stars mystery. For this mystery, we're going to need 4 pages, 7 Crests of Dagon, and 3 Disorder Paintings, all restored. Once you finish all of that, you'll be at least level 25, and you can head back to the Carrot Ed site for a new spot, the Administratum Debris. You're going to be staying here until level 29. Now you can start completing collection logs, Zerosian 1 and Museum Zerosian 1s. If you want to level faster, complete Zerosian 1s for more pylon batteries, if you want more Chronotes, which will help in the future, complete Museum's Erosian once. The difference is pretty negligible, so I'll leave the choice up to you. Just make sure you complete both logs at least once. Now that you've hit level 29, we're going to head back to the Infernal Source to the Cultist Footlocker spot. At this spot, there's a new page mystery. You'll need four of these pages to complete the Embrace the Chaos mystery. And then once you finish that, you can complete the Contract Clause mystery. You'll be digging at this spot from level 29 until level 36, so that will most definitely be enough time to get all of these pages and both of these mysteries done. Once you hit level 36, head over to the Sacrificial Altar and start completing Zamorakian 1 and Museum Zamorakian 1 collections. Once you finish the Zamorakian 1 log, don't do it anymore. 
The Museum Zimmerakian 1 is better. Just make sure you finish both logs at least once, and you're going to stay at the spot until level 40. At this point in time, you should have all of the requirements you need to complete the assistant qualification at the Archaeology Guild. If you need more excavations or restorations, head all the way back to level 5 spot at Caradet. And now that you're an archaeologist assistant, you can start spending your chronotes. Precision is going to be the best upgrade to get first, but make sure you buy all of these. Also in the archaeology shop, there's consumables that you can buy. These are not going to be worth it until you're level 99 and have the master outfit. So don't spend your chronotes on these. What you can spend your chronotes on, of course, after you've purchased everything you've unlocked from the shop, is research missions. And you're going to need at least 168 hours or seven days of research before level 99 to get your guildmaster. You can spend your chronos on research missions that give you materials and a chance of artifacts. You're going to need at least 24 hours of research by the time you're level 70 in order to get the next tier of qualification. So I'd recommend sending off whatever special research missions you've unlocked to this point, and then send off a 24 hour research mission so you don't have to even worry about it. After doing all of that, you're going to head back to the Sacrificial Altar, which is the spot you've been digging at since level 36, and grind until level 42. And at level 42 archaeology, now we unlock our third dig site, the Everlight. To get here, just like with the Infernal Source, teleport with your archaeology journal, run over to the map table, and then teleport right to Everlight. The first spot you unlock at Everlight is the Prodro Moy Remains. Sorry, I'm going to butcher all these names. You'll stay at this spot from level 42 until level 45, and you can complete the Fallen Angels mystery and the Queen of the Icene, which is a page mystery. Once you hit level 45, we're going to head back to the Infernal Source, and we're going to go to the Dis Dungeon Debris. And you're going to stay here until level 47. And at level 47, you're going to head back to Caradet to the Presidio Remains, stay here until you're level 48, and make sure you've completed the Time Served Mystery, as well as restored enough artifacts for all of the collections. That's five timepieces and four pendants. And once you're level 48, you're going to head back to the Everlight, to the Monoceros Remains, and you're going to stay here until level 50. And once you hit level 50, make sure you complete the Desperate Measures quest. This will give you a Cosmic Focus, which allows you to AFK the scale if you want. It prevents your sprite focus from falling below 10%, and that gives you 10% more XP while you're gathering. The quest also gives you 20,000 archaeology XP, which is almost two full levels. Do this quest ASAP. Now that you're level 51, we're still at Everlight, and we're going to head to the Amphitheater Debris. We're going to stay at this spot until level 56. Nothing fancy here, just restore your artifacts evenly. At level 56, you're going to move to the Ceramic Studio, and you're going to stay here until level 58. And from level 58 until level 60, head back to Carrot Et to the Carcerum Debris. Now this spot is kind of far from a material cart, so I would use a Beast of Burden or some Porters here. Now that you've hit level 60 Archaeology, you're going to need to get two Dragon Medics from Big Game Hunter. These have a 1 in 101 drop rate from Big Game Hunter, so you might be here a little while. Once you have your two Dragon Medics, make sure you augment one of them with Honed 5 and Impsult. Impsult will automatically send some of the materials, some of the soil, or some of the artifacts to your bank at the cost of prayer points. So if you have an Elven Ritual Shard, use it. Once you have your two Dragon Medics with one of them augmented, head back to the Carcerum Debris until you're level 61. When you hit level 61, head back to the Everlight, and we're going to start excavating the Stadio Debris. While you're here, you can start getting the journal pages for the Fall and Rise mystery. Once you hit level 65, we're going to head back to the Infernal Source and start excavating the Infernal Art. But we're going to excavate here from level 65 until level 68. At level 68, we're going to head to the Shackroth Remains, and as soon as you can, complete the Dagon Bai mystery. This will unlock Ancient Summoning. And now that you've unlocked Ancient Summoning, you can start using Waterfiend Familiars. While training archaeology with water fiends out, you have a 5% chance to double soil, materials, and artifacts. These are so, so good. 
Now every single Water Fiend pouch takes 200 Spirit Shards, one Blue Charm, one pouch, two Blood of Orcus, and two Hellfire Metal to make. So you're going to be spending a lot of time at Material Caches, but it is absolutely worth it. So after you've completed Day Gone By and made a bunch of Water Fiend familiars, we're going to head back to the Shackroth Remains, which you probably want porters for, and stay here until level 69. At level 69, we're going to head back to the Everlight, and we're going to go to the Dominion Games Podium. And you're going to stay here until level 70. And now that we're level 70 Archaeology, we're going to head back to the Guild to claim our Associate title. Again, if you need more Restorations or Excavations, head back to the level 5 Zerosian spot. Once you unlock the Associate title from the Guild, you have new unlocks that you can buy. You don't need to buy the Material Storage Upgrade until level 90, so save this for last. Also, if you have Invention Unlocked and you want to use the Auto Screener, you don't need to upgrade your Soil Box because you won't be using it. Other than that, buy all of the unlocks. And with whatever Chronotes you have left, make sure you're sending out your research because once again, you're going to need 7 days of research missions by the time you're level 99. And now that you're level 70 Archaeology, it's time to upgrade your Dragon Matic to a Crystal Matic. You can bring the Dragon Matic that you've been using that's already augmented, along with 4000 Harmonic Dust, and you can turn it into a Crystal Matic. Now that you're level 70 Archaeology, you can unlock the fourth dig site. It's the Stormguard Citadel. And the first spot we're going to be excavating at Stormguard is the Ecovian Memorial. And we're going to be here from level 70 until level 76. While you're here, you can do the Leap of Faith mystery, as well as the Atonement mystery, which is a journal page mystery. Once you hit level 72, head to the Everlight. We're going to excavate at the Oikos Studio Debris, and we're going to restore three cups, two vases, two bowls, and then head back to the Ecovia Memorial. At level 74, we're going to do the same thing. At the Carrot Et Chapel Debris, we're going to restore three of each artifact, and then we're going to head back to the Ecovian Memorial. And stay at the spot until level 76. And at level 76, before we go to the new dig site that we've just unlocked, the Warforge, we're going to stay at the Stormguard Citadel and excavate the Keshik Gur. Sorry, again on pronunciations. We're going to stay at the spot to complete the Wing Out mystery. And we're going to restore three of each artifact. And now we'll head to the fifth dig site we've unlocked, the Warforge. Our first excavation site that we'll be digging in the Warforge is the Gladiatorial Goblin Remains. Now make sure you restore these evenly because you'll be here from level 76 until level 81 archaeology. And while you're here, you have a chance to get the first commander journal pages as well as Imkando shards. Now you're going to need four of these shards. Don't worry if you don't have any or all of them, but by level 81, they are rare. But as you get to a higher archaeology level, you have a higher chance of getting them. And now that you're level 76 and you have access to the first five dig sites, you can restore tetra compasses. Yay! Now if you aren't familiar with these, they give complete tomes, they give archaeology materials, they give clue scrolls, and they give artifacts. Basically, they're a clue scroll version of archaeology that also gives clues. Bad analogy, but hopefully you get the idea. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you train archaeology using only Tetra Compasses and Complete Tomes, because that's definitely not the fastest way or most efficient way of doing it. But it definitely is a fun way. Since these Tetra Compasses give Complete Tomes, and Complete Tomes scale with your level, it's not going to help or hurt you if you save up and stack a whole bunch of tetra compasses to open. Anyway, back to training archaeology. Once you hit level 81, you can head to the Infertile Source and to the Animal Trophy spot. We're only going to stay here until we can restore two of each artifact, and then we're going to head to Carrot Et, to the Pontifex Remains. We're going to restore three sensors, three miters, and two croziers here. And then we're going to head to Stormguard, to the Tailory Debris, and we're going to restore three Dreamcoats, three Plumes, 
and two paracels. Then we're going to head back to the Warforge, to the Crucible Stand Debris, and we're going to stay here from level 81 until level 83. Again, make sure you restore these evenly. At level 83 Archaeology, you're going to complete the Out of the Crucible Mystery, and then you're going to complete the Into the Forge Mystery, even if you don't have any Mkando Shards yet. Once you complete these two Archaeology Mysteries, you'll unlock the ability to create your Mkando Matic, once you have the Shards. After you completed both of those Mysteries, head to the Goblin Dorm Debris, and stay here from level 83 until level 84. Once you hit level 84, we're going to head to the Everlight, to the Oikos Fishing Hut Remnants, and we're going to stay here until level 85. At level 85, we're going to head to Stormguard, to the Weapons Research Debris, and we're going to stay here until level 86. At level 86, we're going to head back to Caradet, to the Orcus Altar, and we're going to stay here from level 86 until level 89. At level 89, we're going to head to the Infernal Source, to the Dis Overspill Spot, and we're going to restore two Tormented Sculptures and three Tapestries. Then we're going to head to the Warforge, and from level 89 to level 90, we're going to head to the Big High War God Shrine. That's a mouthful. And now that we're level 90 Archaeology, we can head back to the Guild and work towards the Professor Qualification. Not much to say about this, there's only three unlocks. Get the precision first, and then the other two doesn't matter what the order. And now that we're level 90 archaeology, we unlock the sixth and final dig site, Orthon. There's a few things to keep in mind while training here. The first, similar to Caradet and Pylon batteries, you get Rex skeleton fragments while training or completing collections here. These are XP. Second, while the roar is active, and you get a global message when this happens, you get 25% more gathering XP anywhere in the Orthon dig sites. 25%. This is huge. Basically, when Roar is active, go to the highest level Orthon spot that you have unlocked. Third, there's 20 potion fragments that you can find while excavating at the Orthon dig site. These are really, really rare. If you are going for the completionist cape, or ever plan on going for this in the future, this is one of the comp wrecks to get all 20 of these. Good luck, and have fun. Now before you start digging at Orthon, upgrade your Cosmic Focus to the Cosmic Accumulator, and also complete the Know Thy Measure and Teleport Node On Mysteries from Orthon. With all that being said, from level 90 to level 91, excavate the Varanosaur remains. When you hit level 91, head to the Stormguard Citadel and excavate the Gravitron Research Debris. Make sure you restore two prototype Gravimeters and three songs, and then you're going to head back to the Varanosaur remains. At level 92, you're going to head to Everlight and the Acropolis debris. You're going to restore two Amphoras and four Rods. You can also complete the No Secrets Left to Steal mystery now. Once you finish those, head back to the Varanosaur remains again. Once we hit level 93, we're going to head back to Caradet to the Animarum debris and we're going to stay there from level 93 to level 94. At level 94, we're going to head to the Warforge and excavate the Ubiusk Animal Pen from level 94 to 95. Now that we're level 95, we can finish Howl's Floating Workshop Mystery, which unlocks Ancient Invention. For a quick rundown on Ancient Invention, you're going to need lots of classic and lots of historic components in order to make the Ancient Gizmos. The best way to get this is to head back to Carrot Ant, the level 5 spot, restore daggers and bows. At this point, it doesn't matter if you're restoring them evenly or not, you're just here for components, and disassemble them. The other two components you unlock from Ancient Invention are Vintage and Time Worn components, and you'll get those from restoring and disassembling higher level artifacts. Usually, if it's above level 70, you're going to get Time Worn or Vintage components. Now that you've finished the mystery and you've unlocked Ancient Invention, now you can make Hone 6 or Hone 6 Prosper in one gizmo, and Impsold 6 or Impsold 3 and Fortune 2 or Fortune 3. Now, with having Impsold 6, having an, an Elven Ritual Shard is still not going to be enough restoration, and you're going to need either Prayer Renewals or a whole bunch of Prayer Potions. Now, before we head back to the Keshek Tower Debris, now is a great time to make sure you finished every collection, every mystery, every special research mission, all of it. 
up to level 95. The reason why now is a great time to do this is because we want to make sure as soon as we hit level 99, we're going to have the Guildmaster, because these unlocks are amazing. So from level 95 until 96, we're going to stay at the Kajig Tower Debris, and this spot is really far from any deposit boxes, so definitely bring porters for this one. At level 96, we're going to head back to Orthon and to the Dragonkin Relicary spot. Now it's up to you how long you stay here for. If you want, you can stay here until you finish the Archaeology Potion recipe. This is a pretty cheap potion to make, needing only Avento and 5 of any soil to make, and then it boosts your Archaeology by 3 levels. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to test this potion because I was already level 120 when the potion came out. But as with almost every other skill in the game, putting forth the effort to boost your level over and over and over again is going to increase the XP you get per hour. However, the rest of my guide is going to assume that you're not boosting your level at all. At level 97, you can head back to the Warforge and start excavating the Goblin Trainee Debris. This spot is similar in terms of XP per hour when compared to the level 96 Orthon spot, but always remember, if Roar is active, the highest level Orthon spot is going to be significantly more XP per hour. Once you hit level 98, you can head to the Infernal Source and excavate the Bizroth remains. You're definitely going to want to use Portage for this spot. Once you get here, restore two Halides, four Katars, and two Z words. I'm not even going to bother with this one. After you've restored all those, head back to Stormguard and to the Destroyed Golem. This is right next to a deposit box and is really good XP per hour. You're going to stay at this spot until you hit level 99. And now, once you hit level 99, make sure you get the Guildmaster title and the skill cape as soon as possible. As for the new rewards in the shop, the outfit is hands down the best option here. And the best unlock for the entire skill. Buy this first, no questions asked. Then, you're going to buy the Meteorite Shard, so you can combine a Crystal Matic and an Encanto Matic to make a Matic of Time and Space. Then, go through the shop and make sure you've purchased every unlock. And then, you can start spending your cronuts on these consumables. Spending your cronuts to buy material manuals and tea is amazing, and it's significantly better than spending your cronuts on research missions. The sheets and the monocles are not that great. If you have some from opening tetra compasses, then sure, feel free to use them, but I wouldn't recommend buying any more. Now let's get back into training the skill. At level 99, you unlock the Dragonkin Coffin at the Orthon dig site, and stay here until level 100. Now you unlock three different dig sites at level 100. So first, we're going to go to Everlight, at the Icing Weapon Rack. We're going to restore two daggers, and two short swords. Then, we're going to head to Caridet, to the Culinarum Debris, restore four smoke clouds, and two vials. Then, we're going to head to Warforge, to the Kaizaj, Kaizaj Champion's Boulder, we're going to restore four spears and as many forged in war sculptures as possible. Then, at level 101, we're going to head back to Orthon to the autopsy table. Again, if you're planning on going for comp one day, then stay here until you finish the four potion fragments that you can roll on this table. Then, at level 102, or whenever you're done with the potion fragments, you can move over to the experiment workbench. Once you hit level 103, you have a choice. You can go to Stormguard for the Keshek Weapon Rack, which you're going to need a lot of porters for, or you can stay at the Experiment Workbench until 104. If you decide to stay at the Experiment Workbench, just make sure you restore every artifact that you need from the Stormguard site. And then once you hit level 104, go to the Infernal Source and excavate the Hellfire Forge. You're going to need to restore two of each artifact. Then you can head to the Warforge and start excavating the Scrap Pile. Now this is kind of far from a material storage cart, but not far enough that you need porters. You can always use your master outfit to teleport back to a bank, deposit all of your artifacts, and get back to the spite really quickly. Or you can just save all the effort and use porters. The choice is yours. Once you're at level 105, you're going to head back to Everlight and start excavating the stockpiled art location. You can also complete the Hallowed Bee and the Everlight Mysteries, and that will give you mastery of the dig site. 
at the 105 spot, make sure you restore 3 Pedosians, 4 Hallowed Bee, and 3 Lord of Light artifacts. Once you've done all that, head back to the 104 scrap pile. Once you hit level 106, you can head back to Orthon and excavate the Ogre remains. At this site, you can excavate the Holy Aggro Overload Potion Recipes, and oh my goodness is that hard to say, which is a very good potion to make whenever you're AFKing either Capsarius or Shadow Creatures or any other tasks that you're AFKing. Stay here until at least level 107. And at level 107, now your archaeology training splits. You can either focus towards the weapons, being the Inquisitor Staff and the Spear of Annihilation, or you can just rush 120 if you don't care for those. First, I'm going to talk about option A, the weapon grind. Option A focuses less on XP and focuses more on rolling as many times as possible to get either the Inquisitor Staff pieces or the Spear of Annihilation tip. If you really want your weapons and you don't care as much about XP, replace the, whatever imp sold perk you have on your manic with a Fortune 4 Furnace 3 perk. Not only does this save you more porters than using imp sold, you also don't need to worry about restoring your prayer. Ever. However, this does consume the materials, so it's going to be less archaeology XP per hour. However, going for the three weapon pieces that you're going to need is going to get you to level 120 archaeology. Or you're done before, in which case you're very lucky, and I'm very jealous. You're not going to need water fiends. You're not going to need to follow the time sprite, because that does not affect your materials. What you are going to need is lots and lots of porters and lots of material manuals. From level 107 to level 114, you're going to stay at the Ancient Magic Munitions, which has a 1 in 100,000 drop rate of an Inquisitor staff piece. Also keep in mind, you're going to need two staff pieces. You get one guaranteed staff piece from completing the Zerosian 4 log, but you need three pieces to make the staff, so you're going to need to roll two more. As you level up archaeology and you unlock new spots, make sure you're excavating and restoring one of each artifact per collection. For the Inquisitor staff hunt, when the pylon is active, you have a 10% increased chance of rolling the Inquisitor staff piece. However, this is only going to save you 3 minutes, because Pylon is only active for 30 minutes at a time. It's not really worth going out of your way to only go for the Inquisitor Staff pieces during the Pylon Hour, because it's going to take you over 200 Pylons to roll the Inquisitor Staff piece, and you need two of them. Once you hit level 114, you're going to head over to the Praetorium Remains, which is an increased drop rate of 1 in 75,000 for an Inquisitor Staff piece but you're only going to stay here until level 115. Once you hit level 115, you're going to head to the Bandos Sanctum Debris, and you're going to stay here until you get your Spear of Annihilation tip. Thankfully, you only need one of these to complete your weapon, but it still has a 1 in 50,000 drop rate, so you're going to be here a while. If you got lucky on your Spear tip, and you found one before level 118, head back to the Praetorium Remains. But... If, like most people, you're already level 118, then you can go to the War Table Debris for the best chance of your Inquisitor Staff piece. These are also 1 in 50,000, so again, it's going to take you a long time. Once you have all the weapon parts, get rid of the Fortune 4 Furnace 3 perk you have, get another Imp Sold perk back on your Matic, and we're going to start training normally again. Now option B, we're not going to focus on getting the weapon parts. If we get them, we get them. At level 107, we're still going to head to the Ancient Magic Munitions, which you're going to need lots of porters for. But we're only going to stay here until level 108. And at level 108, we'll head back to Orthon for the Monksha device. And yes, we're going to need porters here. Once you hit level 109, head back to Everlight and start excavating the Bibliotech debris. You don't need porters here. And at level 110, you can head to the Infernal Source for the Chetonian debris. You're going to restore two Chaos Elementals and two Variuses, and then you're going to head to the Warforged Weapon Rack. You're going to stay here from level 110 to level 111, and you're going to restore two Hook Swords, and everything else only restore the Man Stickers. Once you hit level 111, head to the Stormguard, to the Flight Research Debris, and you're definitely going to need Porters here. Restore three Caps and two Goggles, and then head back to the Warforged Weapon Rack. 
at level 112, head back to Stormguard to the Ethereum Forge. And you're going to need porters here. You're going to stay here until level 113. And then once you hit level 113, head back to Orthon to the Shalomun. Jolo? Shalo? Yolo? That one. And you're going to need porters here. You're going to be staying here until level 114. Again, remember, if Roar is active, this 113 mine spot is going to be significantly better than the 114 or 115 spots. And speaking of 114, once you hit that level, head back to Caradet and start excavating the Praetorium remains. And you're going to need porters. Stay here until 115. From level 115 to 116, head back to the Bandos Sanctum Debris in the Warforge. And you're going to want to use porters here. Now, you don't get 3rd Age Iron from this spot. Just keep that in mind and restore all of the artifacts from this spot as evenly as possible. You can start preparing 3 quarters of the Red Rum 3 logs to be finished as soon as you hit level 119. This will give you lots and lots and lots of Chronotes and lots of Tetra Compass pieces, which are, of course, XP. Once you hit level 116, head to the Infernal Source towards the Susaroth remains, restore three Helms, two Pauldrons, and two Urimize, and then head back to the Bando Sanctum Debris. At level 117, you're going to head to Everlight to the Epitomatoi remains. Again, sorry on the names, guys. These are really hard to pronounce. You're definitely going to want to use porters here. Restore two lances, two spears, and head back to the Bando Sanctum debris. This completes the Ceridoman 4 log, which unlocks the relic that gives you 2% more gathering XP, including while training archaeology. At level 118, we're going to head to Stormguard to the Howl's Workshop debris. Again, you're going to want to use porters here. Restore four stones, two counters, and two astrolates, and then head to Caradet. At 118, the Caradet spot you unlock is the War Table Debris. Again, you're going to want to use porters here, and you're going to stay here until level 119. Once you hit level 119, first you're going to head to Orthon to the Shalo, Jolo, Yolo, something remains, the 119 Orthon spot, and restore two of each of these artifacts. Again, if Rora's active, you're going to want to stay at this spot. It's going to be better than the Bando spot. But if Roar is not active, then you're going to head to the Warforge, to the Makeshift Pie Oven. First, make sure you restore two cooking pots, and then you're going to restore Boss Mans, until you complete all of the Red Rum 3 logs that you've been preparing from the 115 Bando spot. This will get you to level 120. Or close enough to it. Now that you're level 120, make sure you buy your Master Skill Cape, this increases the rate at which you excavate artifacts. Now, the Sorthen Debris is the spot that you unlock at level 120 at Orthon, and it's, it's very similar XP rates towards the Makeshift Pie Oven, mainly because you need a disgusting amount of gold rune to restore your artifacts. And if you don't mind camping material caches all the way to 200 mil, go for it. It's just going to be slower than just sitting at the makeshift pie oven. However, if Roar is active, then obviously the Sorth and Debris is going to be the best XP in the game. Regardless of which spot you choose, the makeshift pie oven and the Sorth and Debris are very similar XP rates per hour, and you'll have no problem getting to 200 million XP. Alright, we've reached the end of the guide, so good luck on all of your fancy weapons and your fancy capes. And I really hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please drop it a like. And if you disagree with any of the methods that I mentioned in the video, or if I missed anything, please let me know about it in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.